الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی و صحب و سلم بعد علیہ اللہ <coughs> Continue on our study of Imam Anawawi's Arba'in Anawawi Rahmatullahi Rahmatin Alay Rahmatin Wasiya uh, Imam Anawawi in the fifth hadith mentioned the hadith of Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha the hadith on an Um al-Mu'mineen Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha qalat قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه وفهو رد وفي رواية لمسلم من عمل عملا ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the hadith of Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها مشهور Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها she said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said whoever innovates in this matter of ours will have it rejected and in another narration in Sahih Muslim whoever does an action which is not from this affair meaning that an action of bid'ah then it is rejected in this hadith there are a multitude of fawaid and as is the way that we are studying this book that we are uh, minimizing and just trying to extract some of the fawaid that the shaykh is mentioning amongst those benefits he mentioned that uh, this hadith shows the fadl of the nisa nabi umahat mu'minin the greatness of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha in that she was this the narrator of this hadith and she was referred to as uh, Umm al-Mu'mineen that she is the mother of the believers Walau kari al-kafirun, walau kari al bidah Even though ahl bidah they hate this, they detest this from the Shia. They curse Aisha. They say Aisha was an adulteress. They say the most evilest things about many of the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, radiyallahu taala majmain, accusing them of hypocrisy, accusing them of kufr and disbelief. And it shows you that there is no misguidance greater than misguidance. That after misguidance. There is no nothing af- left after that. That a person who's on dalal and bid'ah, that it is mithmum, and that it is wicked, and it will lead them to a type of wickedness that it is even difficult to articulate how foolish someone could be to curse the mothers of the believers and say that they are not mothers of the believers, but in fact call them uh, disbelievers and other than this and another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us the permissibility of taking a kunya for example my I call myself Abu Abdurrahman I'm known as Abu Abdurrahman is my kunya why because my oldest son is Abdurrahman and with that you uh, a person often in the culture of the Arabs and some of the other cultures but it's really a Muslim uh, culture but you'll find that the uh, people often refer to themselves and take kunyas take uh, nicknames or names which ascribe to being the father of so-and-so or the son of so-and-so uh, another benefit of this, of this hadith is this, this hadith uh, encourages the women in general to to uh, learn the religion and to be uh, to to learn and practice their 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 religion as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha is a shining example of the believing w- women and what a believing woman should be like in piety and in uh, righteousness and in knowledge, in fact. <clears throat> so this hadith, Hafta Nisa ala tafaqa fi deen. That this hadith, it 
it uh, encourages the women to learn their religion, to have fiqh fi deen. And as we mentioned many times, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Man yiradallahu bihi khairan yafqu fi deen." Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. That fiqh fi deen, that's that that's that understanding of the deen. And that's something all of us as Muslims should strive to uh, achieve, to learn how to practice the wajibat and avoid the muharramat. And the only way we know what's haram and what's halal is by knowledge. Another benefit of this hadith is also that it is the permissibility and that it is encouraged for also a woman. Yan baghiyan takun al mar'a da'iyatun khair. Uh, <clears throat> that it is also permissible and encouraged, in fact, for a woman to be a da'i, to call people to Islam, to call people to Tawheed, to call people to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which unfortunately we lack a lot in our ummah. We don't have as many women who are searching, uh, seeking the knowledge, and then inviting people, at least teaching in the circles of women, at least at least um, uh, encouraging and women reaching high level of knowledge to where they can give fatwa and fatwa to the people in the religion. So this is very imperative that we strive our best to uh, for the for the women as well as well as the men to uh, learn our religion and call to it to the extent of our ability. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has completed the sharia in that uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, "Man ahdatha fi amri na hadha ma laysa minhu furad." Whoever innovates in this affair of ours has, will have it rejected. Why will they have it rejected? Because it is if they are claiming that the deen is not complete, if they are adding to the deen, if they are subtracting from the deen, if they're saying, well, the sharia is not useful now, or the sharia should be changed like this, or uh, we don't really need to practice this sunnah anymore, or whatever the case may be, that this is their implicit claim that they know better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen and what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, illustrated for us in his sunnah. So this shows us the importance of adhering to the Quran and the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and avoiding uh, innovating in the religion and that the religion is complete. Another benefit of this hadith, bayan a nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam li deen kulluhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, he showed us the complete Islam, that Islam is not lacking uh, in anything. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us the obligation to uh, to follow the Prophet Sallallahu and that is Muharram to uh, to follow, to, to innovate in the religion. Uh, this hadith also was a rad ala ahla bid'a, uh, a refutation of ahla bid'a and their, those who take a minhaj or a methodology in trying to uh, innovate new ways of da'wah and new ways of understanding the religion without the right to do so. This hadith also, probably one of the most important aspects of this hadith, and we'll stop there, uh, is that this hadith also illustrates for us one of the conditions for having our deeds accepted. And if we want our deeds to be accepted in Islam, what are the two conditions that need to be in place? What are the two conditions that need to be in place if we want our, if we want our deeds to be accepted? If you want Allah to accept from you, what are those conditions? There are two. Huh? Uh, no, but following the Prophet ﷺ is one, and that's what this hadith illustrates for us. And this is one of the uh, things. Yes, the first uh, condition is that you have ikhlas, that you are sincere in your intentions. You worship Allah sincerely, that all your worship is directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that the second condition is following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this illustrated for us, this hadith illustrated the importance of following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam